Hi everyone, my name is Connor Tuluk. I'm a solutions engineer here at Nearmap. Today I'm going to be talking about how to utilize some of Nearmap's content, mainly our point cloud, along with some built-in features and infraworks that lets us classify this point cloud and get a little bit more value out of it. So the first step that we want to do here is navigate to Nearmap's map, uh, map browser application, our web-based application where we host all of our content and allow for users to export that data for local use. We're going to export a couple different types of content here. First, we're going to select our geo-referenced image to serve as a base map, a background for uh, the rest of the content that we're going to be loading. Uh, we have the ability to select our resolution and then simply hit export and we'll have a, a version of that saved to our local computer. Then we're going to navigate over to our 3D data <coughs> and select our capture date, our projection, and then what kind of content we want. Uh, in this case, we're going to go ahead and export uh, four different pieces of content, our textured mesh, our point cloud, our DSM, and our DTM. User has the ability to define the area um, as well, so you have a fine, fine control over how much uh, 3D content you're actually exporting. Then we're going to jump over to our InfraWorks workspace here. We're going to start a new model. We're going to call it uh, Durham, North Carolina since that's where our uh, content is being generated from. Uh, and then we're going to select our coordinate space that we want to use for this project. We're going to go with NAT83 North. All right, so once our workspace has loaded up, uh, we're going to see a new uh, InfraWorks environment. And we're going to start loading some of our uh, near map content into this world. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our data sources and we're going to navigate over to the um, high res base map that we've exported from map browser directly. So we're going to select that as a raster. Then we're going to go over to uh, format <coughs> or configuration rather and uh, select the type of ground imagery. Um, and then just assure that our coordinate system space is matching what our workspace has been set to. Uh, then we can hit close and refresh and we'll see our terrain uh, load up in just a moment. All right, so after just a minute, we have our high resolution image uh, into our InfraWorks environment. Uh, and the next step we're going to do here is load up our actual point cloud data. So with the 2021 release of InfraWorks, we actually can do some really cool things here. We can load up an LAS or an LAZ file directly, which is the native format from uh, NearMap out of Map Browser. Uh, but in this case, I actually happen to have a recap model already done. Uh, so that gets to avoid that conversion process that happens in the background. So I'm going to just go ahead and load that up. And what we're viewing now is that recap point cloud model um, of near map content for this exact area in Durham, North, North Carolina. So what we want to do then is to go to the point cloud uh, options and actually establish our 3D data, our terrain data. Um, off of this point cloud. <clears throat> so the way that we do that is first we have to classify that point cloud and process it. So we're going to run that tool here uh, and this takes a couple of minutes generally but when you're done uh, near, uh, InfraWorks has then uh, used its tool to um, help establish what every point is and figure out which ones are probably the uh, terrain data points. So let's go navigate over to our point cloud themes and turn on that classification output. <clears throat> so what we're viewing here is uh, the colorized model and essentially uh, showing what InfraWorks thinks every point should be. Uh, the different colors here are showing different objects, uh, basically the object detection. Um, and those more brown points are the points that are just the terrain. So if we swap over to the uh, terrain overlay, what we're going to see here now is our uh, our image um, with terrain data that has been derived off of that point cloud. You can see this is very good. Uh, there's a couple of uh, areas that were slightly off, um, but this is natural when we're using this point cloud. Some of those are going to be miscategorized. So what I want to really quickly show you is kind of how some of those other near map content pieces can be used to supplement that output. If we go ahead and navigate to our uh, DTM, that's our digital terrain model uh, that near map generates in a raster, we can also load that in InfraWorks and uh, pairing that with the high resolution ground imagery that we exported earlier. Uh, we also have a very good product that can um, be worked with within the environment. Here you can see a lot of those gaps. Some of those misclassifications of terrain have now been removed uh, from the, the uh, direct near map output. And we have a very good uh, uh, view of the terrain slope and, and changes. 
So again, both very good workflows, uh, but it's nice to have the options depending on how the classification model is working. So diving back into the point classification itself, let's dig a little bit deeper into some of these objects that InfoWorks has derived from the classification model. So you can see some of these smaller little bush and tree objects. Um, those have been uh, classified as individual objects. And what we can do then is go into these point cloud modeling tools for vertical features. And we can actually navigate from object to object and change the points into actual InfraWorks 3D models. So in this case, these are clearly bush, uh, small bushes or trees uh, that you can see in those high res image, uh, the high res overlay. Uh, so we can change those models into uh, tree objects. In this case, uh, the point cloud is, is finding this car here. So what we can do is change that model over to a 3D InfraWorks car model. And so this can be done, as you can see, we have 762 uh, features that have been found from uh, the classifier. So you can go through and cycle through each one um, and really add uh, an easy and extra layer of depth to your point cloud within the InfraWorks uh, workspace itself. All right, so we're going to talk about one more uh, conversion here. We're going to look at 3D buildings, right? So let's select one of the buildings that our point classification model has found. Uh, as you can see, just from the point cloud uh, outline here, it's clearly uh, what would indicate uh, an existing building. So what we're going to do here is swap this point cloud object with an actual InfraWorks 3D rendered building. So if we navigate over to our style options and then go to the residential uh, building directory, we can find this single story model that would pretty closely match what's probably uh, on the ground here. Uh, and then if we zoom out, you can see that paired with our high resolution base map on our terrain model, we have a very good uh, photorealistic representation of the world um, and, and the existing site itself. We're going to talk a little bit later on about some of the alternative workflows using our uh, building footprints to extrude buildings up as well. Um, but right now, let's get into uh, linear feature extraction. So this is going to be things like uh, road striping, guide rail, um, power lines, things like that. Anything that uh, runs linear um, along the terrain. So what we're going to do here is just show an example of how you extrude uh, paint stripe objects. So we're going to go to linear feature extraction, make sure that we select the correct style. So in this case, uh, we're doing linear feature of uh, paint stripe. And then we are going to uh, draw that along the linear feature. You have the option to do this manually or automatically. Uh, in this case, I'm doing a, a manual extrusion. Uh, and as you can see, we're, we're slightly off in certain areas. What, what is meant to happen with this tool is it should be draping directly onto the terrain model itself, but sometimes it struggles to um, do this, especially when you're in manual mode. So in order to correct for this, what we can do is go over to the linear feature cross-section viewer and we can actually navigate down our entire feature, uh, viewing that cross-sectional view of the point cloud and adjusting manually in areas that we may be having some issues. You have a couple of theme settings that can be very useful in uh, finding exactly where your point should be. I think one of the best ones is the RGB, uh, simple colorized indication of uh, what every point looks like, especially in the case where we're trying to find yellow stripes. Uh, what you are really looking for is that yellow point cloud dot that you can uh, set your feature to. So just navigating along this alignment here, uh, fixing up a couple of these points, you can see we're slightly too high in this location. So we can modify that down a little bit and line it right up with our uh, point cloud terrain right where it should be. I'm going to navigate through this profile or I'm going to navigate through this uh, cross section a bit and uh, fix a, uh, a number of these points just to give that uh, indication of what that workflow uh, looks like. One more piece uh, to remember during this is, you know, oftentimes using that automatic uh, extrusion method can assist with some of this draping um, and make it a little bit more accurate. Uh, zooming out here, you can see that now we've adjusted these points. We now have these segments uh, that are uh, delineating that paint stripe. And the good thing about this uh, with some of the crossover into the other softwares is these features can then be exported into things like Civil 3D to help with some of that plan view uh, and more engineering focused workload as well. 
So quickly, just to end the video and wrap it up and kind of uh, offer some alternative workflows, uh, the point cloud classification is a fantastic built-in tool uh, in the InfraWorks environment. Um, but sometimes uh, knowing what other options you have uh, can be very useful. So in the case of NearMap's content stack here, uh, some of our newest products include our AI vector data. So this is ground feature recognition where we now vectorize um, different ground features, one of which is our building footprints. So if we cycle through our point cloud here, you can see that the point cloud classifier has recognized each one of these buildings, but we might not necessarily have a 3D object uh, preloaded that perfectly matches them. So using our uh, building footprint vectors, what we can do is load those as a shape file um, and then extrude up from those footprints to create our 3D buildings that the much more accurately ma uh, represent what the buildings really look like. So I've gone ahead and run that tool here um, and you can actually see the point cloud overlaid with our 3D building objects and they're very, very uh, close. And then if I go and zoom out here to toggle on the point cloud versus the 3D model, you can see that things uh, line up very well. The, the point cloud data points um, very closely overlay onto those 3D buildings uh, that we've now extruded up.